OK, so we're going to solve a problem where for a 3 by 3 matrix, we're given the matrix of minors. We'll say for this example, this is the matrix of minors for some original matrix. Then we need to try and reconstruct what was that original matrix given its matrix of minors. So if you imagine our original matrix had entries A, B, C, D, e, F, and so on, then this would be what its matrix of minors would look like. So you could try and do this using simultaneous equations. So 7 is equal to EI minus FH and so on. But this would be really long and complicated. So it's actually quite a nice way of doing this using our knowledge of matrices. If you think about when do we use the matrix of minors, so this is really useful in a method for calculating the inverse of a matrix. So let's imagine we started trying to find the inverse of our original matrix, you find the matrix of minors, introduce some negative signs, transpose, and so on, then you could find your inverse of the original matrix. So this could be useful because then we could invert that to get back to our original. So if we were to introduce the negative signs to get your matrix, matrix of cofactors, you'd have minus 8, minus 5, minus 5, minus 8, then you transpose this to get your adjugate matrix, which give you 7, minus 5, 2, minus 8, 10, minus 8, 3, minus 5, and 8. So this would be our adjugate matrix. Then the next thing we would do to find the inverse of our original matrix is you just divide by the determinant of the original matrix. Unfortunately here we don't know what the determinant of the original matrix was, However, we can still work this out. Let's call our adjugate matrix here B. And let's think, how is the determinant B going to be related to the determinant of our original matrix? So let's call our original matrix A. So we'll say our original is defined as A. Then we know that basically B, if you multiply by 1 over the determinant A, this will give you A inverse, the inverse of the matrix A. So there's a hidden assumption here that the determinant of A is non-zero, that it's invertible. Unfortunately, you can't really do this problem where you reconstruct from the minors if A isn't invertible. So we'll continue from here. And B, you can multiply by the determinant of A on both sides. You get B is the determinant of A times A inverse. So now we can work out how the determinant of B is related to the determinant of A. So the determinant of B when we multiply by a scalar, this introduces a factor of your determinant of A cubed when we calculate determinants. So we get the determinant of A cubed times what is the determinant of A inverse? This is just 1 over the determinant of A. So you'll see that the determinant of B is now determinant of A squared. So we can conclude the determinant of A, which is what we're really interested in, our determinant of our original matrix, is going to be positive or negative the square root of the determinant of B, this matrix we've got here. So unfortunately we can't get rid of this plus or minus sign. And you can think of this, this makes sense intuitively. If you had your original matrix and replaced A, B, C, all of these by their negatives, this would give you the exact same matrix of minors. So unfortunately even when we impose that our matrix is non-singular, you still can't get the original matrix back, but we will be able to get this back up to this plus or minus sign. Okay, so let's calculate the determinant of B and we can work out what the determinant of our original matrix was. So for the determinant of B, we do 7 times 80 minus 40, so 7 times 40, then minus minus 5 times minus 64 plus 24, which gives us plus 5 times minus 40. And then finally 2 times 40 minus 30, this gives us plus 2 times 10. So this is our determinant of B then is 280 minus 200 plus 20 is 100. This is our determinant of B. So this tells us then that the determinant of A, determinant of our original matrix, is going to be plus or minus the square root of this, so plus or minus 10. Now to find A inverse, the inverse of our original matrix, we just need to divide through by the determinant of A. So you divide through here by plus or minus 10, which tells us then that A inverse, the inverse of our original matrix, this is going to be plus or minus 7 tenths, or write these all as fractions, minus 5 over 10. So I'm not going to simplify the fractions because we still need to work with this in order to find the inverse of A inverse, which is going to give us our original matrix. Minus 8 tenths, we get 3 tenths, minus 5 tenths, and finally 8 tenths over here. So the next thing we would do to find the inverse of A inverse to get us back to our original matrix is we'd write out the matrix of minus for this. So for our top left entry, we do 10 times 8 over 100, so 80 over 100, minus 40 over 100, which gives us 40 over 100, which I'll write as 4 tenths. Then next, for our top middle entry, we have minus 64 over 100, 
plus 24 over 100, so minus 40 over 100. All right, this is minus 4 tenths. And then similarly for the top right, we'll have 40 over 100 minus 30 over 100, so 1 over 10. And you'll see we'll get some similar kind of structure here to what we've seen before. So just skipping through the calculations, then you get minus 3 tenths, 5 tenths, minus 2 tenths, 2 tenths. You get minus 4 tenths, and finally 3 tenths for our last entry, so 70 over 100 minus 40 over 100. So this is now our matrix of minors for our inverse matrix. The next thing we need to do is introduce positive and negative signs. So we can actually, this is very neat, get rid of all of those negative signs there. We've now got our matrix of cofactors. Next thing we would need to do is transpose this, and then we divide through by the determinant of A inverse. So when we transpose, I'll take out the factor of 1 tenth as well. When we transpose this, we get 4, 3, 2, and we'll have 4, 5, 4, and finally we've got 1, 2, and 3. So this is now our transpose, gives us our adjugate matrix. So all we need to do now is divide through by the determinant of A inverse. We know the determinant of A is plus or minus 10, so this tells us the determinant of A inverse is plus or minus 1 tenth. So if we divide through by plus or minus 1 tenth, we're going to be multiplying by plus or minus 10. So actually we can conclude then that A, our original matrix, is going to be plus or minus this times 10, so that just gets rid of your factor of 1 tenth there, so it'll be plus or minus 4, 3, 2, 4, 5, 4, 1, 2, 3. And this might feel like we've taken a very long-winded roundabout route to find our original matrix A, given the matrix of minors. So we'll finish off just by having a look at a, not necessarily immediately obvious, but a much quicker way of doing this. Now you might be wondering if some of the steps that we've taken along the way there actually cancel each other out and perhaps some of them can be skipped. So for example we divided and multiplied by the determinant of A. So it turns out that we can actually skip quite a few of these steps and there's a slightly shorter way of getting back to our original matrix with our plus or minus sign from the matrix of minors. The first thing that you'd need to do is find the matrix of minors of the matrix of minors. So we'd start off with our matrix of minors then in the top left have 80 minus 40 would give us 40 then we would have 40 minus 10 gives us 30, then 40 minus 20 gives us 20, and similarly you get 40, 50, 40, 10, 20, and 30. So this is our matrix of minors of our matrix of minors. You can see this looks a lot like what our original matrix is. And all you would need to do next is just divide by the square root of the determinant of your matrix of minors. So you divide by plus or minus the square root of your determinant of your matrix of minors. So here it's actually dividing by the determinant of your original matrix. Then this will get you back to, with the plus or minus sign, your original matrix. And I think this is really cool because I would have thought finding the minors and finding the minors of the minors, I wouldn't have thought intuitively that this actually gets you back to something that looks so similar to your original matrix. You can have a go if you're really keen, you can have a go at proving this algebraically that this is always going to work as long as you don't have a singular matrix as your original matrix there.